Seabus. Uh, today I just wanted to go over a couple things. I talk about uh, aeration an awful lot, talk about aerators, but uh, more than half of the stops I go to are seating and diagnosis stops. Uh, so I kind of wanted to show you what we're into today, uh, just really to talk about seating options when you have lawn damage. Now, um, talking about damage, uh, there's a couple of different things to consider. Um, you know, you really have to be a bit of a detective to figure out what caused the damage. Is it insects? Is it fungus? Uh, is it heat stress? Is it uh, spray or fertilization? Uh, so we look at those kind of things. I'm not going to go too far into the diagnosis of this kind of thing. Uh, I started to aerate this lawn. I thought about making this quick video, so that's what I'm going to do right now. Uh, and I'm just going to show you the options and how I went over it with the customer and what we decided to do here. Uh, so let's take a look at the yard. Uh, to start with, uh, he had a really nice lawn, he said, starting in the spring. He said it's usually one of the nicest. Uh, now as you look at it, there's a bunch of patches of brown um, grass throughout the lawn that you can see where he's lost turf. Uh, in different areas, like along the sidewalk here, you'll see that uh, it's almost completely gone. Um, other areas, mostly the front and side yards on this yard, uh, that suffered a lot of damage but you can see that um, areas like this uh, are very patchy I would say you know he's got less than 50 percent grass through here you know areas like this obviously he's got almost zero grass he's got about uh, you know five percent now through here under the tree it gets a little bit more shade he's got a little more grass in there and then on the side once again this catches shade from the tree so he's got a little bit more grass there and then all the way up through here um, so in order to find out what's going on, I've sort of dug some spots out, took a look, uh, and I've tried to diagnose the problem for it. Um, we came to a couple options. Sometimes when you talk to customers about uh, their lawn and diagnosis of the lawn, uh, you have to feel them out a little bit too, because sort of like if you go to the mechanic and, you know, the person might be a little embarrassed. I'm not going to say that's the case here uh, 100%, but... You know, they might be a little embarrassed to what happened to their lawn. Uh, like, let's say you take the car to your mechanic, and, you know, last week you drove through a pothole the size of the Grand Canyon. Now you take it to the mechanic, and you say, hey, well, it's just vibrating. It, it, it vibrates a lot when I drive, and the mechanic says, oh, what happened? And you go, I don't really know. It just started vibrating. Well, you know, they don't really want to admit that they caused the problem sometimes. Uh, same thing with turf care. That's not always the reason. Usually there's an env environmental factor or an insect or a fungus, something like this. Uh, in this situation, I was a little apprehensive because he's, he's raked it and worked on it a lot. Uh, a lot of the dead areas uh, have kind of been cleaned up some. Um, and, you know, they're not just laying dead like they normally would. Uh, I quickly re ruled out uh, most insect damage. Um, but what really leads me to believe something odd is because the coloring uh, is a bit of a reddish hue and that usually tells me that either there's a fungus involved or most likely a chemical application either over fertilization when it's hot uh, possibly he mowed the yard short over fertilized it or um, it could be something to where uh, he tried to spray weeds or something like that in the middle of the heat uh, those are probably two most likely things uh, as I looked as I looked real close, like in this mailbox area, you know, the customer told me he didn't do any fertilizing since spring, and it's now September. Uh, but as I looked, I could identify what looks like fertilizer pellets all through here. Uh, so I didn't notice that through the rest of the lawn, but right here on the curb line, I did notice the fertilizer pellets. So something seemed a little off to me. Um, really got to be a coherent about that because of any seeding you do uh, is going to you know be affected by that probably if it has a lot of recent fertilizer down and you seed it good chance your seed will come in and then you know it absorb too much of the chemical and it'll die off really quickly uh, that's what we see a lot order repair this he really has three options uh, option number one is aerate the lawn and overseed the lawn now with your aeration and overseed uh, option, it's pretty simple. You use an aerator. Uh, you'll pull cores out of the lawn anywhere from about uh, two to four inches usually. Uh, and then you just broadcast seed over the top. Now you can broadcast the seed with a, a mechanical spreader like I have right here. Um, 
you know you can see my seeds down in there uh, so you can do it with something like this or a push spreader works just fine too I uh, know what happens though aeration overseeding is really more just of a maintenance procedure so that's really geared towards a lawn that's more or less healthy um, and what you're trying to do is just thicken or boost the lawn it's not really meant to be a complete uh, repair or renovation process um, so that leads me to uh, um, uh, the second and more appropriate option on this area is slice seeding so what we would do there would be aerate the lawn first to open up the ground then we would use a machine like this uh, that does our slice seeder machine uh, now this machine has a set of blades underneath it I'm not going to go too detailed but it cuts um, slits it's also referred to as slit seeding so it'll cut slices in the lawn about an inch apart and it plants rows of seed as it does that it's a really effective way of seeding uh, the reason for that is because one you use a lot of seed uh, when you're when you're slice seeding and uh, the other reason why slice seeding works so well uh, is because you're getting the seed right into the ground it makes great soil contact so you're using a lot of seed a lot more uh, goes down on the rate than you do with aeration and overseed also the seed gets cut right into the ground so it's perfect for renovation uh, also you do not have to remove all this thatch material uh, the thatch material when you do slice seeding um, actually helps as you cut your slits through here uh, it actually helps hold the seed into the ground uh, so that way it doesn't wash out very easily uh, and also that thatch will help retain moisture when you're watering and overall uh, it comes in really well so most of the time you don't have to re re uh, remove the dead material when you get ready to do your seeding so I discussed all the options with the customer um, and then the last thing you have to consider is what type of seed to use uh, in this situation his lawn is predominantly uh, bluegrass or a blue perennial rye mix um, so we discussed the options of transitioning it over to a turf type tall fescue or maybe even like an RTF um, since he's never had these kind of drought or these problems before and he's always had a great looking lawn he decided to stick with the blue rye uh, blend uh, so I'm gonna seed this with a 50 50 blend of perennial rye and Kentucky bluegrass and it should come in looking really nice hopefully if he keeps on the watering it'll stay really nice so let's get to aerating and then I'll show you what the process is like So there is one other option, I've just started aerating, but I thought of one other thing. There is one other option I gave the customer, and that's because of a budget. Uh, slice seeding can get kind of expensive when you're doing large areas. Uh, so sometimes I'll give him an option of a double aeration and a double overseed. So we'll aerate it um, about two or three times, and then we'll um, put seed down in between those uh, aerations. So we'd aerate it once, seed it, aerate it again, and seed it a second time in a different direction. Um, you can renovate a lawn that way it's still not as effective as slice seeding because you just don't have the consistency uh, whenever you aerate and overseed a lawn um, a lot of that seed frankly gets wasted because it doesn't make good enough soil contact you poke all those holes some of the seed falls in the hole other seeds don't fall in the hole and they get wasted with slice seeding you have a lot more soil contact so in this situation um, it's a perfect candidate for slice seeding to renovate this lawn so let's keep at it got the lawn aerated now uh, now I will say admittedly I beat it up real heavy because uh, obviously this is about a 90% renovation some areas I sort of tore up a lot more than I normally would um, so this is not your typical uh, lawn aeration I went extra heavy here but you know this is almost complete renovation so I really wanted to open up the ground as much as I could uh, now we're about ready to start on the slice seeding so uh, I'm not going to go too much into technique here on aeration and slice seeding those are on different videos I really this video is just discussing you know the process between uh, and the difference of process between aeration and overseeding um, and say slice seeding instead uh, why you would do that uh, so now we're going to go ahead and slice seed I told you before we decided to go with the blue rye so we're going to use a um, this grass seed here it's a high quality um, and it's 50% Kentucky bluegrass 50% rye 
uh, on our slice seed machine. I'm just going to set the depth. I'm going to fill my hopper. I'm going to set my seed flow. Uh, keep in mind, every seed that you use has a uh, different rate that you put it down at uh, for proper germination. So keep those things in, in mind when you're seeding. Um, and let's get started with slice seeding. So we've got all the seed sewed in now with the slit seeder. Uh, this is what it looks like when you're finished. You look at a close up, you can see um, the scratches where the seeder penetrates. And um, you can see over here, kind of went different directions with it. And you can see uh, the thatch that lays on top of the grass. So this is typical results uh, after you're done with the slice seeder machine. Um, this is how you're going to renovate a lawn. In this case, I would say it was probably, um, you know, 90% dead to at best probably about 60% good grass at any spots. So if you're trying to decide whether or not you should slice seed or aerate and overseed or both, uh, I usually use a simple rule of thumb. If the grass is less than about 75% uh, good condition, uh, then I would slice seed those areas. We don't always slice seed the whole yard. Sometimes we just do spots. Then we come back in any areas that are 75% better turf, uh, we would just aerate overseed. So that's kind of how we make a determination a lot of times. Be sure you use the right kind of grass seed. Be sure you do your right type of fertilizing. And uh, you know, if you need help with it, uh, give us a call. LawnAeration.com is our website. You can find us there. Uh, one other thing, uh, if he follows all my instructions on aftercare, I will be sure to try to come back by here in about three weeks or so, to let you know the progress, maybe three weeks and six weeks, so you can see how it looks. Uh, this is the kind of guy, I think he's gonna stay right on top of it with the watering. Uh, I think it's gonna come in great. So remember, don't lie to your doctor, don't ever lie to your mechanic, and of course, don't lie to your lawn guy because uh, we're here to help you. I'm glad to help you. And we're going to do everything we can to get your lawn back in shape. Subscribe. Keep watching. Thanks.